Everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Back on January 3rd, 2022, we did the part one of our Unify Access setup. Well, now we're going to do the part two. In this video, we're going to add some users. We're going to put an electric strike on our Unify Access Hub, as well as a wave to exit button. We can use the UA lights to do a wave as well, and I'll show you that and a T-Rex or a request to exit. If you haven't seen that first initial video, I will put it in the description below so you could go and watch that. That's just where we create the VLANs and we adopt all of the elements. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting or Unify Access Consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you'd like to support the channel, the best way to do it is to use our Ubiquity affiliate links and I'll put those in the description. First, let's take a look at my setup real quick. I have my UDM SE and that's going to my USW Pro aggregation. From there, we're going to my USW Enterprise 24 PoE. Since this is a lab and I'm doing it up in my office, it's just connecting to my USW Lite 16 PoE. But you really should be using a switch that has PoE++ so that you make sure enough power goes out to your Unify Access Hub, the readers, and any of the accessories that you're using. But for this lab video, we're just going to use this switch. Then connected to the switch, we have the UA hub and connected to the UA hub is our reader pro, even though it shows that it's connected down to our switch. Now let's get into Unify Access and add a few users. All right, so now we're on the main dashboard of our Unify Access. If we want to look at our devices or our elements, we go to devices. We could see we have our UA hub, we have the UA pro, and then we have the UA Lite. I just added that in. If we want to add a new user, we just go to users. Below, you can see that I have two users, Cody McCallum and then YouTube Test. There's a few things that we could do with the add user. So we could either add a single user, we could add multiple users, or we could import users from a CSV. We're just going to add a single user. Now we need to input the first name and the last name. I'll just call this John Snow. We could give them an employee ID if we'd like. I'll just give them 0123, and then we could specify their start date. So we'll just say June 8th. Now we have these groups. Right now it falls under the default Mac Telecom Networks, but if we wanted to create different groups, one for admin, one for staff, we could do that. Under access methods, we could give them an NFC card or a pin code or both if we'd like. And you could make the pin code length shorter or you could leave it at eight characters. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. So let's go ahead and add a new card for this user. I'm gonna add new card. And then we need to select a device or a reader where we want to register this card. I'll do it on the UA Lite and we'll press select. And now it's saying that we need to hold it up for about five seconds. And you should be able to hear this go off. Now it says UA card 10002 was found. Are you sure you want to assign this to Jon Snow? And we'll press assign. Now we see the access card has been assigned to Jon Snow. We could give them a pin code as well. So I'll just give them a pin code of 13467913. If you want to generate a code, you could also do that below and then we'll press add. To switch the pin code length for our users, we would have to go down to our settings. In our settings, we have this preference tab. And then under preference tab, we have the pin code length and we could have it for eight, six, or four. Also, if you don't like NFC cards, you could get NFC fobs and you could use any brand. But if we click this toggle switch, we could only use the Ubiquity NFC cards. Now that we've added a few users into Unify Access, let's go over to the Unify Hub and get some of the accessories wired up. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna hook up is our electric strike. And with most electric strikes, there's two different modes that you could put it in, fail secure or fail safe. So fail secure, if your power goes out, the strike will stay locked. For fail safe, if the power goes out, it will go open. If we're using an external battery to power up all of our accessories, our strikes, our mag locks, or any of our motion sensors, then we would put that on our dry relays. If we want to power it up using the Unify Access Hub, it needs to be a 12 volt strike or a 12 volt mag lock. So since I'm using this in a fail secure mode, we need to wire it up where our red is going to normally open and then our black is going to the COM port. So this lock should work. If I put my access card to the reader, it will accept me in and the strike will unlock. Let's test that. Okay, so if we get our access NFC reader, you're gonna hear that it opens up. You could hear Jon Snow. And then we could open up the electric strike, which is exactly what we want. We could also put these cards on a schedule to only allow access at a certain time. And we'll go over group policies and scheduling in the next video. 
The cabling running in your walls to be connecting to these electric strikes should be 18-2 stranded copper cable. And I'll put links below to what you should be using. If we want our electric strike to run off a battery, this is a 12 volt battery, we could do that. So first we get our positive lead and we plug it into our battery. Once it's plugged into the battery, it's going to go into our dry and then it's going to go into the normally open port. On our door strike, we're going to grab the positive or the red wire and put it in our comm. And for our negative, we're going to attach it to our lead going back to the battery. So I have these little clips here. I'll put our negative to the strike in and then I'll grab the battery lead. And then we'll plug that into the battery. So now if we put our access card up to the door, this strike should work and it will be running through the battery. And you can see that the door strike is now working and I'll leave a link to the wiring diagram in the description. Now let's move on to another accessory. This is a wave to open and it's by Enforcer. The link will be down below. But what we wanna do, this is gonna be a request to exit. So we need to connect this to the 12 volt power as well as the request to exit. There are cabling diagrams on the back of most accessories, so this is just how I did it. The black and the red are for the power, so I'm going to put that into the 12 volt power. We can see that this has power, but it won't do anything because we don't have it in the request to exit, so we need to connect that now. So I have my green and yellow, and this is just four conductor station wire. So let's put that into the request to exit. Now if we wave our hand in front of it, it will go green and the strike will unlock. It will lock after a few seconds. The next accessory we're gonna put onto the Unify Access Hub, I call them T-Rexes, but really they're just motion sensors that will unlock the door. And you could turn up and down the delay on these things. So I have it wired in. Every different device will have a different wiring. So you could look at the wiring diagram, but I have my power connected and then we have our data communication going through. So what we have to do, we need to connect it the same way as we connect that wave to open button. I'm gonna grab the positive on my power. And then I'll grab my negative. And here a little green light came on and we have the motion sensor right inside. Usually you would see these above the door. So when you're walking towards the door, it just opens up the door for you and you don't need to take any action. Now we need to grab our yellow and our green wire and put it in our request to exit. So the sensitivity on this thing is super high. So as I'm moving, the door lock is always open but we can change that if we'd like. So they have this delay button, we just need to turn it. So now if I wave my hand in front of it, it will unlock. And we could see that the door is unlocked. And these devices are great as you've already authenticated to get in. So why would you need to authenticate to get out? And it will just unlock the strike for you. The last thing I'm gonna show you is the Unify Light Reader. It has a wave to open feature. So if we go into our Unify Access and go to Elements, there's a toggle switch to turn it on. Then all we need to do is wave our hand and it opens up the door strike. So that's going to be it for this Unify Access accessory video. There are different accessories that you could use as door contacts or some speakers or alarms. I don't have any of those right now, but maybe we'll do a separate video on them. If you do have door contacts, you could come into your Unify Access hub and then you could go to the aux relay behavior. This is set for a door opener, so an automatic door opener but you could switch it to be alarm. So if somebody breaks down your door without swiping in, you would have an alarm set up, you'd have a door contact, and that alarm siren would go off. Maybe we will cover that in another video if there is some more interest. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Again, if you'd like to support the channel, the best way to do so is to use my Ubiquity affiliate links. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.